Okay, I call this a new stay stack principle for odd size packets. Now, if you're familiar with the stay stack principle, it is one of the most powerful principles in all of card magic. And I'll add a link in the description below to a video that explains the stay stack principle. The important difference here today is the fact that the traditional stay stack principle applies to even size packets. And we will be looking at odd size packets. So to my knowledge, this has never been shared before. And if it has, I guess I've rediscovered it. So I thought I would just start with a quick effect to show you the kind of thing you can do with this principle, but it truly is as versatile as the traditional stay stack principle, which has almost infinite applications. So as you can see here, I have a good selection of card values, suits, and colors. I believe there are 15 cards here. So we'll go ahead and gather these. Now I'm going to go ahead and mix these cards thoroughly with input from you. And so what I thought we would do first is go ahead and just uh, deal them out into three piles with random stacking from left to right or right to left, your choice. Left to right, okay, very good. Why don't we do another one of those? So three piles, very good. Come on, left to right or right to left? Left to right again, okay, you really like that left to right. Uh, why don't we do into five? Five piles, if I can keep it on camera and keep it from going downhill here. <laughs> okay, do you want stacking from left to right, right to left, right to left this time? Kind of mix things up, that's great. Okay, and why don't we do uh, one more of those? Okay, would you like the stacking from left to right or right to left this time? This time you want left, left to right? Okay, would you like to do any more dealing into three or five piles? Just into three piles one more time. Okay, can do that. Would you like the cards stacked from left to right or right to left? Left to right. Okay, I think you would have to agree, looking at the original packet, which I actually showed to you, given the choices that you've made, and you could actually fill this out into three piles as many times as you would like, or as the, as the spectator would like, more importantly, uh, the same thing for five piles with random stacking from left to right or right to left. But despite all of that, we're going to do something quite surprising together. I'm going to use the Klondike Shuffle and I'm going to simply pull off pairs. That's all I'm going to do. Just pull off pairs of cards. If I can <laughs> grab the cards here. Oh, we have a single card there. Oh, of course, yeah, we have 15 cards. So in pairs, we'll have seven pairs and then a lone survivor here, a lone card. Okay, well, what is it I think I have done here? Okay, so I could have a written prediction for this. I didn't take the time to write one. And my written prediction would say that somehow you have mixed the cards in such a perfect manner that at the very end here, these little piles of cards will have card values that add to 13. So let's just check that here. Okay, eight and five, that's 13. Uh, four and nine, 13, very good. See, Jackson 11 plus two is 13. Uh, queens 12 plus one is 13. Uh, nine and four, of course, 13. Uh, seven and six, 13. Uh, three and 10 add up to 13. Now, we have a single card here. So I said all of the piles would add to 13. Hmm. Well, that would tell us that this would have to be a king, which is a 13. Okay. Well, so how does this work? Well, it uses this new stay stack principle. Now, where I started is I started with these very pairs. Okay. And so the way you set it up is you just take one card from each pair, it doesn't matter which, so we'll go ahead and just build it. You can just kind of randomly choose those. And then the king in the middle, <laughs> and then go around in the same order, okay? And so this will now be, quote, a mirrored packet relative to the center, okay? There you go. I picked them up in the opposite order there. 
Okay, that's how I should have picked them up. Okay, so the idea here, in fact, let me just show you a simplified version of all of this, okay? So to explain this, let's begin with kind of a basic example first. So let's just look at some principles first because jumping to that is fairly sophisticated, okay? Okay, so to understand this, um, I thought we would uh, show you two or three packet structures and kind of explain what's going on. Okay, so you can see here that this is what we call a mirrored packet. So the outer cards, same value, ace, two, three, four, and then we have like a five in the middle or whatever you would like in the middle, okay? So we would call this a mirrored arrangement with a single card in the middle that has no partner, okay, which is the five, okay? So here we have nine cards, so an odd size packet. So the traditional stay stack principle won't help here right? Because you have to have an even number of cards. Okay, so what I want to show you here is we have nine. In fact, let me just bring out a little write-up that will help us as well. Okay, so with nine cards, as we just had, so we have ace, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so this is mirrored as you come in from the outer edge to the middle, and the five is a lone card there, okay? Now, the principle, this new principle states the following. For each divisor of the packet size, so here it's nine, nine factors is three times three, so it only really has one non-trivial divisor, namely three. What that means then is we can deal out these cards into three piles with random stacking from left to right or right to left, and we can do this as many times as we like and this will preserve the mirrored organization of those cards. Why don't we just do one more here? Maybe we'll do uh, left to right stacking, just for a change here, left to right. Okay, so let me just sh show you what arrangement we have now, okay? So it's gonna be a bit of a mess, right, from what it was. But do you notice anything interesting, okay? Well, for one thing, the five is still in the middle. That was that middle card, and it will stay there. <laughs> if you deal out into as many piles as the size of a given divisor for the total packet size. But notice what's happened. The outer ones are matching in value. So here with their mirrored. So uh, the threes, the fours, the aces, the twos, and then the five. So you can deal this out into three piles with random stacking from left to right, right to left, as many times as you like. And then if you do something like I did, right, where I just Klondike shuffled pairs, you'll be matching up the card values perfectly. Now here we'll have a, a five in the middle, right, by itself. Now in the performance, I took advantage of that because I had, instead of having these pairs match in value, I had pairs that add to 13, okay? And we had more cards, right? We had 15 total. And then I had a king in the middle, okay? So that's kind of an illustration of this new stay stack principle. Now the size of the packet that I used in the performance was actually 15, okay? So let's look at kind of a quintessential odd size mirrored packet. So the outer one, same value. So ace, two, three, four, five, six, sevens. And then we have this odd card out. I just put an eight there, okay? So that's where I would have put the king, right? And the performance. And then in place of the aces, I'd have two cards that add to 13. In place of the twos, I would have two cards that add to 13 in a different way, hopefully. And the same thing. So you just get a good mixture of card values and colors, okay? Now, 15, so we're over here now. So 15 factors as three times five, okay? So what that means then is we can deal out into three piles with random stacking from left to right or right to left spectator can decide that. They can do as many of these as they like. They truly can. Uh, we can also deal out into five piles. Trying not to go off the camera view here. And we can randomly stack from left to right or right to left. Uh, the spectator can decide that. Okay, so we can do one of those or 29 of those, however many. Maybe we'll do another into three piles random stacking decided by the spectator, maybe right to left, that's fine, okay? And then 
what and a lot of times you can actually show well not this not in this case so see what's going on right you'll you'll see the mirrored structure readily uh, that's the reason to disguise it in the way that I did with my performance because these special cards like the aces they were two cards that add to 13 the fours in place of the fours were two cards that add to 13 and so forth so that completely hid the structure. But for educational purposes, you can see that the packet is still, quote, mirrored. We have aces come in one, four, seven, six, uh, threes, twos, fives, and then that lone eight in the middle, which will always stay there. Okay, so that's for a packet of 15. So here I have a packet of 21 cards. I'll show you in a second. Uh, so that would be something like 1 through 10, and then like an 11. So I put a jack there. Um, and then 10, 9, 8, 7, all the way down to 1. And then 21 factors is 3 times 7. Okay, so with a packet like this, if you deal this out into three piles with random stacking and do that as many times as you like, and then deal out the cards into seven piles with random stacking from left to right and do as many of those dealings as the spectator asks for, this packet will still have that characteristic of being mirrored relative to the pairings that you've set up at the beginning, okay? So I don't know, maybe we'll just do, um, we'll deal out into three. Uh, but try this, you know, deal it out into three as many times as you like, and then seven, and just see what happens, okay? So the cards will be moving around. Now, after just dealing it out into three piles, they won't move around that much. So if you do additional dealing into three and then seven, these cards are gonna be thoroughly mixed. And then of course, if you hide what it is you're pairing, special cards here, they could be maybe matching and suit or something like that. Or like I had, they add to certain values or they could be even value cards or odd value cards or Fibonacci value cards or non-Fibonacci value cards. Cards with three letters in their card name, like ace, two, and six, versus cards that have four letters in their names, like four, five, king, jack, nine, and so forth. Okay, so there's countless applications of this. And then, given the divisors of the new packet size, you can deal out in just the sort of way that you can with the traditional stay stack principle. So I personally think that this is a really big deal because if you have any sense of how many card effects use the standard stay stack principle, you'll realize if there's now one for odd size packets, that opens up an entire universe of new card effects that can now be designed, taking advantage of this stay stack principle for odd size packets. So thank you for watching and uh, take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.